I thought about not even making this video just simply because I think anyone who's into fantasy knows why you should read the Stormlight Archive, but we made a schedule and we're going to stick to it. So let's go ahead and say the words and take a look at what makes the Stormlight Archive so unique. All stories told have been told before. We tell them to ourselves as did all men who ever were and all men who ever will be. The only things new are the names. Words are where most change begins. To love the journey is to accept no such end. I have found through painful experience that the most important step a person can take is always the next one. Sometimes, a hypocrite is nothing more than a man in the process of changing. I will take responsibility for what I have done. If I must fall, I will rise each time a better man. Do not let your assumptions about a culture block your ability to perceive the individual or you will fail. Must someone, some unseen thing, declare what is right for it to be right? I believe that my own morality, which answers only to my heart, is more sure and true than the morality of those who do right only because they fear retribution. But merely being tradition does not make something worthy. We cannot just assume that because something is old, that it is right. Life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. I will protect those who cannot protect themselves. Hey, what's up, bookworms and knights radiant? I'm Mike back today for some more Cosmere 2020 as we move past Mistborn and into Roshar to talk about the Stormlight Archive because we are officially in Stormlight September. In case you don't know what that means, which we're going to get four Stormlight videos this month. I'm going to do this, why you should read the Stormlight Archive, and I'm going to review the three books that are available. And who knows, I might throw in a bonus, like character rankings or maybe a preview for Rhythm of War, but that'll probably be closer to November. But look, what I kind of just mentioned there at the beginning is why I thought maybe I wasn't going to do this. Uh, everybody that does a booktube channel that relates to fantasy has reviewed this series already. And they've told you why you should read this. I, I, I always talk about that video done by my guy Captured in Words. Uh, his video that he did for why you should read the Stormlight Archive, it's going to be greater than this one, okay? <laughs> but, like I said, we made a schedule. I want to stick to it. And people have said they want to hear my opinion on these things. Uh, I think you can tell I'm a big fan, a very, very big fan. Uh, but I want to get really into that with a little background of how I discovered this series. It isn't like everyone else. I wasn't huge into fantasy anymore. About three years ago, I kind of started to step away from fantasy again. Uh, really, if it wasn't Joe Abercrombie, I wasn't reading it at this point, or George R. R. Martin, but you know, he doesn't write anymore. And a friend of mine is said, hey, I think you would really try, try Brandon Sanderson. I was like, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing Will of Time, but I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> That's a long story, right? Anyhow, he said, maybe you should try out Mistborn, because it's not as much of a commitment as something like Will of Time is, but I think that you'd really like it. And I burned through Mistborn in a couple of days. I loved it. I thought it was just fantastic, which I just recently reviewed that whole series here on the channel. And then I was like, man, I love this. What is next? And uh, he, him and another friend of mine were having a conversation, and he talked about the Stormlight Archive. I was like, okay, well, let me look this up. And I was like, there's only two books out? It's supposed to be ten books? No, no, I ain't starting another series. And this is when I learned about how fast Brandon Sanderson writes. And I'll get into that when I get into my good and bad stuff. But long story short, I read Words of Radiance and Way of Kings in a matter of probably a week and a half. And as you know, that is not light reads. Took a little longer for Oathbringer because I burned through those first two so fast. It was a little bit of, okay, I'm going to burn out if I keep going. So I took a little bit of a break. 
But I'll get into those when I get into those individual reviews. I'm just kind of want to give you an idea that I was kind of a late arrival to this. I read it after Mistborn. But uh, yeah, it doesn't change the way that uh, that had resonated with me over all this time. And uh, that just gives you a little bit of things to talk about here. If you don't know, the Stormlight Archive is a planned 10-book series that is supposed to be done in two cycles of five apiece. Uh, what makes this series so different than others is each book is kind of dedicated to giving the backstory of one of the central characters in the story. And it's just a format that has worked out brilliantly that I've tried to see. I've seen, I see other authors that have tried to do this format and they really struggle at it. Uh, but, you know, Brandon Sanderson gets called the Lord Ruler by me for a reason. And it's mostly because of Stormlight Archive. If you don't know how much I love the series, I have said, I think that when this is all said and done, we're talking like 20 years from now, people will look at this as this generation's Lord of the Rings or Wheel of Time. I think it's that special. And um, yeah, we'll just get into that by talking about what is it about. That's the best way to get about this. But I just want to let you guys know this will be no spoilers. There will be no spoilers for this. So if you've not read the series, my Why You Should Read videos are always trying to convince people who haven't given the series a shot yet to give it a go. So let's do that. Let's talk about what is it about. It has been centuries since the fall of the ten consecrated orders known as the Knights Radiant. But their shard blades and shard blade remain. Mystical swords of suits of armor that transform ordinary men into near invincible warriors. Men trade kingdoms for shard blades. Wars are fought for them and won by them. One such war is about to swallow up a soldier, a bright lord, and a young woman scholar. The story takes place on the continent of Roshar and around numerous main characters, but mostly that of a trio of POV characters. A soldier named Kaladin. Dalinar Kolin, a high prince with a shady past, and Shalon Devar, a young light-eyed woman looking to save her family from financial ruin. While Kaladin must adjust to sudden changes to his life and freedom, Dalinar seeks to discover what his brother's final words meant, and possibly the origin of their world as it's known. Meanwhile, Shalon only has to gain the confidence and trust of the most reputable scholar in all of Roshar to get her family out of trouble. Meanwhile, battle is raging on the Shattered Plains as the Parshindi have been blamed for the assassination of the King of Elikar and leading to the War of Reckoning. And that takes us straight into book number one titled The Way of Kings. So there we are. That is your setup for it. But let's go immediately into what makes it good or bad. And yes, it's 99% good, guys. So it's going to be mostly good in this breakdown here. First, I, I gotta say, I think it's because this is old school fantasy, straight in the vein of Tolkien or Robert Jordan. This is straight epic fantasy, like almost like something that you would read coming from the 80s or early 90s, just with like a more modern polish, I guess you say, in the style and prose. So I think that, that right off the bat, uh, you know, I've started to lean more towards the dark uh, stuff like that, dark, gritty stuff like that more as I've gotten older. But every once in a while, like with a Michael J. Sullivan uh, and, and like with a Brandon Sanderson, I still like those things. So I, I like to go fall back into that. And when I found this world, man, it was like, wow, this is this is exactly what I've been looking for. So like I said, the stakes are high, but there is no real kind of grim, dark anti-heroes and no character deconstruction that you find on a lot of modern fantasy now, where you, subverting expectations seems to be priority number one. And in doing so, I feel like they really do a disservice to some of their characters. Uh, I, I don't feel like that's the problem here because, you know, most authors these days seem to have moved to, like, moral ambiguity with their characters. But uh, this, like I said, this really stays traditional. And I think that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. I, I cannot find another comparison for it besides Will of Time, which I'll get into and why you should read it. Uh, but let's talk about some more particular things of what makes this really work. The execution. Uh, these characters have so much depth. I mean, these aren't short books, so these characters are well-developed. And when you get their arcs come all the way around to full culmination at the end of a book, you're like, wow, wow. So the execution, uh, the style, you've heard of the Sander Lanch probably at this point. And that's because a, a lot of his books will build, 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 much like a Robert Jordan. And then in that third act, will just completely floor you. And it's no different with all three of the Stormlight books that are out right now. The third acts are some of the best in fantasy. Uh, but again, while it's not grimdark, these are very, very damaged characters. And I think that that's... 
that's something I, I really actually was surprised with, is that you have big characters in this book that suffer from mental illness, that suffer from developmental issues. And it's a little personal here, but, you know, as someone who has a young child that suffers from developmental issues, that really resonated with me, that he was able to write something like that into his book and it not just be like, oh, man, that sucks for this person. Uh, it was really, really refreshing. And when I get into that particular character, when I do my individual reviews, I'll, I'll talk about why that was such a special character to me, uh, even more so now that I, I'm dealing with that in my life. So uh, that's one of those things that I think your mileage is going to vary on that, just depending on what your life is like. But it was something that was really special to me, uh, something that I really, really appreciated. But uh, everyone has an arc in every one of these books that is satisfying. That's the biggest thing, is a lot of people will, will start Way of Kings, and they'll say, this is really, really slow, this is really slow. And if they get to the end, they're like, Oh my God, it was so worth it. Journey before destination, right guys? Because this character arc, even starting with that first book, super satisfying. And Origin of Radiance, even better, is even better. And then the third book, you get the, the, the backstory of the, another character and you're just like, it's just too much. It's just too much, but in the best, best way. So yes, he doesn't screw around when it comes to character development in these books. It's, it's just phenomenal. It's hard to find anything on par with it in modern fantasy right now. It really, really is. Jordan was the last one I think was able to develop characters this well because of the, you know, the the length of that series. Whereas Sanderson, I feel like he's already done a lot of the same kind of things in just three books. But uh, look, it's not Sanderson if we don't talk about the magic system, right? I'm not going to say it's, it's as complex as, say, Allomancy is. Uh, I, I've said when I first started reading Mistborn, I was real concerned about following along with the elemental chart and all that stuff and seeing what allomancy combinations created and things like that. With this, it's nothing quite like this, but let's just say, it, I'll say it's very well constructed and it has a very, very well defined set of rules. And when I get into my Oathbringer review, I'll talk about you know some of the pros and cons of this magic system. I'll get a little more into depth with it there. Uh, I feel like it maybe kind of overpowers some characters. But uh, again, it is, another, I mean, no one makes better magic systems than Sanderson. I mean, there's been a few that have come close. I'm really liking the one in Lycanius right now. I'm really, I really enjoyed the one in Brent Weeks' Lightbringer. But uh, other than that, it's, it's hard for me to think of magic systems that really, really compete. Uh, of course, if you read Wheel of Time, obviously you like that one. Of course that counts. Of course that counts. But uh, yes, his magic system in this, just as good as anything else that he's written. Uh, like I said, I still think I prefer Allomancy to it just because of how creative it is. But this is good. This is good stuff. I, I, I like what he's done here. Uh, of course, we got to talk about the world building. I'm not saying other authors don't build their world and do it well. I'm just saying none do it as good as this. None. I mean, Tolkien and Jordan are the only ones I found that have constructed a world as deep and as rich as this in as little bit of time. Like, I mean, I look. Uh, I think if you take Way of Kings and maybe part of Words of Radiance, you've already you're already longer than the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So you can't just say it's because of length here. But what this man has created is just truly spectacular. Uh, Roshar is just like this totally unique world, and it doesn't rely on you know our universe to set the stage. A lot of these things you always see where you can see this straight parallel to something in our world, like maybe it's taking place in our future. I see that's a lot of things that modern fantasy does. It's, it's, it's way into, you know, our dystopia future uh, where everything's just kind of like a reset. Uh, whereas this is just, it never wants to me, am I pointing out a parallel to the real world? This feels like its own thing, unique. I never feel like the multiple cultures that he set up in this, I never feel like there's a real world parallel to it. It's totally unique. And I say, when I read fantasy, I want an escape. I don't want to be taken out of the story because of some kind of uh, knee-jerk reaction to something that's going on in the real world right now. This is it. This is 100% its own thing, man. If you've found parallels to something in real world, I think you might be trying too hard. This, to me, feels every bit as unique as anything that I've ever read. It is truly special in that regard. And that's why I think that when you say anyone else is good at building their world, I say, well, is it Brandon Sanderson good? Because I don't think anyone else has done it as good. You can say what you want about the man's writing. You can say, okay, I didn't really care for this character or that. The magic system just okay. You cannot deny the world building in just these three books so far. It is above the rest. It really is. No one 
can do it like he can right now. That's still alive. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, the action sequences. Look, when I read the prologue to the very first book, that was the first time. And look, I enjoyed Mistborn. I enjoyed it a lot. But that was the first one. I was like, this feels like straight a movie in my head right now. This is so cinematic. The way he writes. It's one of those things where he just drops you in. You have no idea what all this terminology means. And you still can see it in your mind. Like, it's just... It's just absolutely stunning the way he fires off that prologue right off the bat. And that's why I said, well, I'm reading something special for sure. It is one of the best prologues I've ever read. Uh, so, yes, yeah, Seth is a bad, bad man. Uh, so if you're worried about the action, I don't think you're going to find anything to dislike here. Uh, there are a couple of bad things. And I say it as bad. Uh, look. If I have a bad, it's, look, these books are long. They are very, very long books. And more times than not, it's never useless information. There might be some parts we could look back and say, yeah, I probably could have sped it up a little bit there. But he does that build so well. I don't consider this a bad thing. Yeah, there's stretches of, of certain books I'll talk about when I get into the individual reviews that I feel like could have been kind of chopped down or cut out completely. But it's not anything, look, look I, I'm going to upset with some people with this. There are chunks of Wheel of Time you can go back and be like, they could have cut that out. And I've said myself, I felt like Wheel of Time could have been one really badass 9 or 10 book series. Like, perfect. Uh, yes, there was a lot of fat that I felt like could have been cut on there. I think even the biggest Wheel of Time fan, if they don't lie to themselves, they can tell themselves this and agree. This, I don't think, is any different. There are parts where I feel like, okay, that could probably be cut, but they're slim. And I think if you go back to them and look at them, Sanderson doesn't usually write something if it isn't going to mean something later. So if there are problems that I have in the third book that I'm going to talk about when I get to Oathbringer, I still feel like these are things that by the time I'm done with at least the first five, I'm going to be like, okay, it wasn't pointless. It did have a point, and this is what it was. So uh, it, since the series is incomplete, uh, that, that that's something that we'll have to go back and address. And that is my other bad. The series is incomplete. <laughs> Look, if you do the math in your head, the first book came out in 2010. He usually puts out one about every three years, okay? Yes, he's put out four in this first one, but he's got to the point now where he's working on so many other series, and I don't imagine that the man's going to stop creating other series. He says he writes those other series as he tries to decompress from writing these Stormline books because they're so heavy. But if he keeps his current pace right now, 2036 is when this series is probably going to be done. That's why I think uh, people that are like, I'm going to wait till it's done until I start it. I'm like, well, he did say it's going to be two, you know, five book segments. So, yeah, wait until book five is announced and then start if you want to kind of do that. I think that'd be the best plan of action. Um, if there's anything else, I'd say it's maybe sometimes it's a little too PG. Uh, more controversy here coming. Look, I think that this book might be a little tough for YA audiences to grasp because, like I said, it is very heavy to read. Uh, if you're a super intelligent reader, obviously that's not going to be a problem. I'm just saying, don't go straight from like The Hunger Games to this, as far as like your reading level is ready for it, because you won't be ready for it. And it'll seem like it's too much. But what I'm saying is, if you've got a mature audience reading this, eh, it might be okay to at least go like PG-13 sometimes. That's that's just a me thing, probably. It doesn't bother. I don't have to have violence. I don't have to have... it. Look, there's violence in these books. He just isn't going to describe it to you bit by bit like a Joe Abercrombie does, you know? He's going to have these things and leave these up to you, much like Robert Jordan did. Those things are all there. You just kind of have to read between the lines there. So I feel like if you want to call that a negative, I mean, again, I'm, I'm reaching here. I'm reaching. This is a series I absolutely adore. So um, yeah, that brings us along to why you should read it. Look, say you just finished The Wheel of Time. And you're one of those people who's like, well, I finished Wheel of Time and I tried reading every other series and nothing just ever compared. It just didn't feel like it was worth it because Wheel of Time just ruined everything for me because I had such a great time. It was so epic and everything else just seemed small by comparison. This is your series. I read the first two books before I started Wheel of Time. So I was able to actually see the comparison, see the influence from Robert Jordan on Brandon Sanderson when I read them. So it was it was kind of a different thing for me. But again, if you're looking for something to kind of fill in that hole in your heart that with the time left, I really think this is the perfect 
series for you. And I don't think anyone's read Wheel of Time and hasn't read this yet. So it really feels weird saying why you should read this because I feel like just about everyone who is interested in fantasy has read this. But again, if you're still holding out and you love Wheel of Time, definitely, definitely do that. Um, if you've read Mistborn and you're ready to level up, this is definitely the way to go. Uh, like I said, I read it after Mistborn. I always recommend Mistborn to everyone who says, where should I start with Sanderson? Always I'm going to say Mistborn is the best place to start. Gives you an idea of his writing style. And like I said, he leveled up when he started writing this. And I feel like you will level up when you read it because it is definitely a step up from Mistborn, in both not only in, in quality, which again, I love the original Mistborn trilogy, guys. Don't misunderstand me here. I'm not, I'm not tearing something down to build something else up. I'm saying... If Mistborn was this good, this is right here. That's not hyperbole. It's it's that good. It really it really is. Uh, the Cosmere. If you've been reading all of his books and you've caught on that his Cosmere books uh, all connect in a way that like Stephen King's multiverse connects. You know, I compared Brandon Sanderson to Stephen King in that one video where I did where I talked about why you should read Sanderson back when I first started this channel. I had a lot of people being like, oh, I just didn't think he was a horror writer. I don't mean it isn't like he's the same type of writer as Stephen King. I meant that he's the he is the Stephen King of fantasy in that one, his output level, because he puts out stuff every year, big honking books every year, and to his connected universe. I think that having the connective tissue for King, it's the Dark Tower, and it definitely seems like with Stormlight Archive, that is his connective tissue because you'll start to see some of those other series that he's written tie into this a little bit more because you start seeing a little bit of crossover if you're looking for it. So yes, if you've been reading the Cosmere, definitely worth keeping going here because of that. And lastly, look, Sanderson's just an awesome dude. His, the way he communicates with his fans is just special. He never, a good guy will apologize for not updating his status bars on his website. Who does that? This guy is incredible. So if you've got that thing where you got the, the writers that you know just seem like they don't want to write and anytime you ask about it, they just they take your head off. Sanderson's not that guy. He's always going to let you know what's going on here. And here's the whole reason I started reading Stormlight Archive before it was complete. After I had the, the George R.R. Martin rule where I said I'm not ever starting another series that's not complete. The reason I went ahead with this is because one, his writing speed, and two, his communication. And after I finished these Stormlight books, I learned, you know what? After you finish a Stormlight book, you need a little bit of a decompress because they are thick, thick reads. This is a very tough series to binge, I think. I think. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot. It is a lot to take in if you're just trying to binge, you know, few, a couple million words right off the bat. But again, I think, again, that just depends on what kind of reader you are. But that's why I did it. And that is why I think you guys should read it. Now, a couple of final thoughts here. Look, I didn't think that there was a modern fantasy writer that could bring in this rich of a world and a cast. Yes, I love several other modern fantasy authors. I'm not going to go through all the names and whatnot. You probably know who they are if you watch this channel. But I just didn't think that any of them were to a Tolkien or a Jordan level where, where they could just really create this living, breathing world with these huge casts and where every character doesn't feel like a carbon copy of another. They, he, he takes the time to develop these characters in a way that Robert Jordan did. Say what you want about Will of Time. One thing you can't say is those characters weren't developed because you look at those characters in book one and you look at those characters at the end of book 14 and it's like completely different people. I already feel like Dalin, I already feel like especially Kaladin, I feel like Shallan, Yasna, all these characters are just different already and we're only up to book four, which comes out in like 65 days or something. I don't even know. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's close. It's close. But look, while I trend more towards the dark and gritty stuff, like I said these days, this is right up there with the first law as my favorite ongoing modern fantasy series. You know, Banished Lands is done, so I'm not going to count that one. <laughs> but uh, yes, I absolutely love this world. I can't, I'm going to eat up anything else he writes in Roshar. Yes, even if they are the awful, awful lift books. That is controversial. We'll get into that when I talk about Oathbringer. But look, guys, uh, you won't find a more layered and nuanced character list in modern fantasy like you get in this story. That alone, if you were like me and all you want are strong characters, well-developed characters that you care about, this is your series, man. It's going to be for you. And that is my sales job. So, guys, Stormlight September schedule. I'm going to do one of these 
per week over September. This is the way you should read, obviously. Next week, Way of Kings. Week after that, Words of Radiance. And then the last week, we're going to be talking about Oathbringer. Like I said, I'll probably do the Rhythm of War stuff as it gets closer. But that is the plan for now, guys. I hope you have plenty of Stormlight thoughts to talk about with me. Try to keep it non-spoiler in the comments. Save those spoiler comments for the individual reviews that I'm going to do because I said I want this video to convince people who have still kind of been intimidated maybe to take the plunge to do so because it is every bit worth your time. So I will talk to you guys in the comments. Life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination.